If you've been trying to build your no-code app while working a full-time job or maybe running a business on the side, you might sometimes feel like it's impossible to do both at the same time. But you can actually accomplish this. We've seen it happen many times before. And in this video, we're gonna talk about how to launch a fully custom app you've built yourself while working full time. Now make sure you stick around until the end because we have a free template that's gonna help you take everything we go through in this video today and put it directly into practice for yourself. Hey, it's Kristen over at Coaching No Code Apps. We help non-technical entrepreneurs build custom apps so they can start their app-based businesses or grow their existing businesses all without coding. And if that's what you're doing, then subscribe to this channel for new videos to help you every single week. So this video has two parts. The first part is gonna go through how long each stage of your app's development, testing, and launch should actually take. So we're actually gonna go through time frames you should be aiming for. And the second part of this video is going to walk you through how to take all of your existing priorities with work and of course with life and everything else and show you how to balance balance those with the development of your app through each of these stages. All right, so let's go ahead and jump right into part one. We're over on the iPad here and you see a line on the screen and this line is essentially the entire time frame it's gonna take you to go from your idea stage where you're at now to actually having your app launch with users on board and we're, we're gonna go a little bit further than that too to help you understand how to balance what happens after you launch and you start bringing users on board. So right now you're somewhere over here. Now you might have already started development and that's fine. This is still going to apply to you, but you're over there and we want to get you over here and ideally beyond again to that point where you do have users on board and there's different stages that you're going to be going through throughout this process. So first, the first stage really is what I kind of call the gray zone. <laughs> And this is probably somewhere uh, that you are in right now. You might be a little bit past it, but essentially the, the gray zone is kind of like this uncontained period where you are just figuring things out. You don't necessarily know the best tools to use. You don't really know how long it should take you. You're kind of trying to find the time to fit everything in. Now I have a question mark here because there's there's obviously not a specific amount of time this should take. It should take as little time as possible. And the goal with the rest of this video is to help you get out of that zone if that is in fact where you are. Now, the next phase is the biggest one. And this is where you're actually building your pilot app. So this is the first version of your app that you're going to bring initial test users on board so you can validate the product and continue expanding from there. Now there are actually two phases within this stage. So we're gonna put them down below here. In this first part right here, you should be focusing on the development of the app. And then right here, is when you're gonna focus on alpha testing. Now, ideally, this process should not take any more than about three months. So during this three months, you're developing your product, you're alpha testing your product, and you're also skill building, right? Because you, well, number one, you're learning what you need to know to get you out of that gray zone, uh, but you're also learning how to develop an app. So you're learning how to use the no-code tools, you're learning development methodology, strategies, how to test, things like that. Once you've wrapped up that alpha testing and you have confirmed that the product you've built works, then you're actually going to go into user testing. And this is going to be your pilot and your beta testing. We're gonna break this section up into two sections as well. The first, again, being that pilot testing and then the second being the beta testing. Now, I'm gonna put a time frame on this, but with a caveat. So we're gonna say for, for the pilot and beta testing as a whole, one to two months. Now the caveat being, depending on the feedback you get, that time frame might change. And really you should expect it to change. It's not gonna be set in stone like that for everyone, but Assuming you actually get positive feedback, so you have proven your hypothesis to be true, 
then I would anticipate these stages taking about one to two months in total. So maybe a couple weeks for that pilot testing so you can interact with your users and get that initial product validation. And then, you know, maybe four to six weeks through beta testing to make sure the product is adoptable and that those users can use it consistently and it really does solve the problem in an ongoing way. Now, if it's not a perfect world and you don't get the exact feedback you were looking for, well, that stage is gonna take longer for both of them potentially. So when you look at this time frame, I mean, the cool thing is you can go from idea to finished with beta testing. So fully rolling out your product in less than half a year as a person without a technical background or who's at least using no-code tools. That's really cool. Now, this is an ideal scenario. Of course, there are things that could pop up. The biggest one being, hey, that you know, full-time job or that business you have. But this is pretty amazing that something like this can happen in such a short time. Now, I do want to talk about what happens after this because that's part of it too. So essentially, what happens up here? Okay, so you finish with your beta testing and you are officially rolling out the app. Now, this part or this phase looks a little bit different for everyone because it really depends on your own goals. But this is what I call the transition phase with your app. One of two or maybe both <laughs> of these things are gonna happen. The first one being you're going to start spending more money because when you are working a full-time job or running a business and you are balancing that with building an app at the same time, you're doing a lot. Not only are you working obviously, but you're building the product and you're skill building. So there is a lot on your plate. But once you actually launch your app, now you are kind of amplifying that. I don't say this to intimidate you, it's just the reality, but once you launch your app, now you're taking those things that you're already doing and you're adding users on board, right? So you have to manage those users and there's going to be support involved. There's going to be um, sometimes some more time sensitive um, an urgency to the development, right? If you get feedback that there is a bug going on in the app, then you're gonna wanna jump on that. So you're adding another layer after you launch and that's a transition period. So sometimes you might end up spending more money on help with your development. So even though you have built your app, right? It, it's, it doesn't have to mean giving up control over your app, but maybe you bring on board a junior developer who specifically takes uh, bug reports from users or who specifically just intakes user feedback and implements that, right? So you can focus on the main development and you can just have an extra set of hands there who's kind of helping you out. Spending money could also look like spending money on marketing help. Maybe that is an area you really need help with and your value add is with business operations or with the development. Maybe you bring on someone for marketing. The second thing here is that you may just end up spending more time, right? So what I mean by that is when you are balancing your work currently and your development, you are balancing the two but you probably don't wanna be doing that forever. A lot of people wanna build and launch an app so that they can transition out of that full-time career or job that they have and into their app. At a certain point after you launch the app, you're going to have to take that balance that you've created initially and start leaning more towards running your app and spending less time on that job or, or leaving that job completely. So the question becomes, how do you find that balance and get yourself out of the gray zone and actually build and launch your app while working a full-time job? Well, this is gonna sound really simple and that's because honestly it is, but you need to start scheduling sprints. Okay, so development sprints, testing sprints, launch sprints, and no matter how simple that sounds, it can be a little bit tricky. And so we're gonna go through a method to help you actually do that and schedule these sprints. Think about the things you do every single day. So from when you literally wake up in the morning to when you go to bed at night, I want you to think through every single commitment you have 
and every single thing you do that's maybe not a commitment but it's just something you do and with all of those things in mind now we're going to go over it and look at the eisenhower matrix so this is really just a way to prioritize all of the commitments that you currently have okay so you might be familiar with the eisenhower matrix but we're going to go over real quick to give you an overview we essentially have important tasks or commitments not important tasks or commitments urgent ones and non-urgent ones okay so important things are going to be like taking care of your kids if you have kids going to work making money running your business whatever it, it may be right those are very important things and then we have not important things this can be like catching up on your news feed or your social media feed every morning when you wake up or maybe it's you know watching that episode of whatever the current tv show is that you're watching uh, every night on netflix so you've decided what's important and what's not important now what's actually urgent what has to be done now or soon and what's not urgent what can actually wait until later and it's not going to have any significant consequence on you or, or those around you you're going to start putting those tasks or commitments that you have into the different quadrants here so the upper left are things that you just need to do these are important and they're urgent that means you you have to do them you there's no if ands or buts about it you just do it okay now down below that we have delegate okay so we have our not important tasks but that are urgent so maybe for example this is like grocery shopping on weekends right grocery shopping is important if you make your own food but it's not important in the sense that if you are the one who does not personally do it there's it's not going to make a difference right so we have this thing that's not really important for you to do but it is urgent because you know maybe you grocery shop once a week and then you make all your food so you got to have your food so that's when you start to delegate delegate can look a lot of different ways it doesn't necessarily mean hiring someone or like having your own personal assistant but you could use an app to get your groceries delivered like maybe that is what you delegate or the way you delegate and now suddenly you have freed up an hour or two every single weekend where you're no longer grocery shopping and then up in the upper right we have schedule so these are things that are important but they're not urgent so they need to happen but they don't need to happen now so schedule them in okay and then on the bottom right here we have cut there are always going to be things on here that are not important and they're also not urgent and these are things you should simply cut from your day-to-day -day. now the biggest key when you're doing this when you're thinking about the do delegate schedule and cut is to be honest with yourself and to be real with yourself right again this can sound very simplistic but when you actually sit down and do it and really comb through every single thing you do every single day then you're going to start to realize there's a lot of ways you can free up your time at least for a certain period right there's always going to be things that you just have to do no matter what but there's lots of things you can delegate for a period of time right maybe that means you have to do something you're not currently doing maybe you have to pay a little bit extra for an app that helps you delegate some of these things or maybe you have a spouse or a partner who you have to you know come to a compromise with where you're going to delegate something that you're doing uh, to them right that, that's not always the case it's not always going to work out for you but you know for a certain period of time if this app is something you're really pursuing that might be a conversation you need to have and most importantly find the things you can cut because there's certainly a lot that you can for this period of time when you're in these most intensive sprints what can you cut so that you can actually do the thing that's going to make the big change in your life and allow you to not have to figure out how to make these balances in the first place when you do go through this process and list out every single priority and every single task that you have in your life it's a lot 
And it, it's kind of a hard thing to get out of your brain. So we have a free template that I mentioned before over at coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash sprints. And it's just going to give you a structured way to pull all of this out of your brain. You're gonna prioritize it based on our do, delegate, schedule, and cut. And that's going to allow you to free up some of your time. Now, what you're gonna do with that free time is start scheduling your sprints. You take that free time, you schedule those sprints, and you make it a rule. Because if you elongate this time frame for your app, you are going to struggle to keep the balance going. You can only keep this up for so long, right? So do this once and do it right. So head to coachingnocodeapps.com forward slash sprints to grab that template, get out of the gray zone and get to that transition period, which is where we want you to be.